Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Mr. KB. It is September 20th, 2015, and I'm sad. <laughs> uh, I just finished watching the 49ers game. Uh, they got smoked pretty bad, um, this game. The defense, they were just on, on West Coast time. I mean, that's, that's the only thing you can attribute that to. Like, Ben Roethlisberger did not have to work hard to get the passes that he got off and the yards that he got and the touchdowns that he got. A lot of big plays over the top with no safety help and, I mean, it is, sorry, I gotta, oh, um, it is what it is, you know, like, it's, it's week two, and the defense just didn't show up this game, this, this really all lies on the defense, uh, as much as I would like to blame Kaepernick for being the bumbling quarterback that he's been the last two seasons, the first two games of this season, he's shown that he has vastly improved, he's taking this game serious now, and, um, and I think it shows in, in his, in his, in his play, um, just quick stats here. So Ben Roethlisberger went 21 for 27, 369 with three touchdowns. The one thing there is he didn't throw any picks. And he didn't get sacked at all. And from the second half of the game, he just no pressure whatsoever, which is a vast contrast to what they did against the Vikings where Teddy Bridgewater was just consistently under pressure, getting sacked. Um, you know, our, our line, our linebackers getting to the backfield. It just wasn't the case. So there was no pressure on the on the quarterback whatsoever, which allowed Roethlisberger to just launch balls 40, 50, 60 yards at a time and have some big touchdowns in the place. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, though, for his take on the game, this didn't do that bad either. He went 33 for 46, 335. So he only underthrew Roethlisberger by 34 yards. Yeah, he had more attempts and more um, and more completions. But that was just because of the pace of the game. The the Pittsburgh the Pittsburgh Steelers weren't allowing many big plays over the top. They did allow one beautiful play to Torrey Smith. Well, beautiful for us, uh, which Kaepernick just lasered the ball in there. Torrey Smith got it, and you know what? Welcome to the club, <laughs> Torrey Smith. I hope that you can have more plays like that in the future. We got 14 more games to go, and I hope that's the case. Um, two TDs for Colin Kaepernick. He had five sacks, four, a 37 yard loss total off of those. But his quarterback rating was a 106. Which is respectable. He had no interceptions. He had he had control of the game. There was a couple times where I would say in the red zone they went they went flat, and and that's where a lot of the the problem also lies is the defense didn't keep them in the game, but they did have a lot of marches down the field. And Jim Tom Sula, for all the credit that I want to give him, instead of going for the safe three point place, he let them play. He said, you know what, we're at four down team yeah we can take three easy ones no you guys are gonna fight this out and get what you guys deserve or not deserve in this case um they they were just stuffed in that area i believe three or four times they came away with no points in the red zone whatsoever and um that's that's the other unfortunate part but i mean as much again as much as i would like to blame it on kaepernick it just wasn't his fault it's just the o-line in those positions would allow the linemen to just be in the backfield, pressure Kaepernick, not give him enough time if we handed it off, or if Kaepernick handed it off, not we, I wasn't in the game. Um, if Kaepernick handed it off, they just stuffed any running back that would try to run down them and just boop, ran to a brick wall. So those those were really the unfortunate parts of the whole game. Um, but, you know, it's, it's early on. It's early in the season. It's only game two of 16. We got 14 more games to go. Uh, in the Niner Nation. So, you know, I'm still holding on hope that this will happen. I was, I was cheering the second half. You know, Kaepernick had some, some great plays. There was some, some things to be happy about. It's just the defense. You know, if, if Kaepernick is gonna, is gonna have these type of games where he goes 335, two touchdowns, you know, that O-line needs to open up holes so our running backs can take some of that pressure off in some of the games. And the defense just needs to be able to stop it. This game should not have been the, the type of game that it was. It should have been a quarterback duel. And for the most part, even though the score doesn't reflect it, it was a quarterback duel. It's just the defense just allowed, you know, their end to get a lot, lot more points and more, you know, a lot more shots off. And uh, I don't care if you're Peyton Manning or Tom Brady or one of the so-called elites in this. If if your defense just isn't going to stop anybody, um, you're going to have a hard time keeping up with them. And uh, Kaepernick tried his best. It's just um, red zone is something that needs to be fixed, needs to be addressed change the tempo up, you know, go no huddle on the red zone. That's what I would recommend as a fan, just watching when you guys have open field, you guys go uh fast tempo, almost no huddle like. You there's plays. There's plays there. Um but in in the red zone and this has been a a, pers a persistent problem for the last four or five years. When you get to the red zone, it, it just falls flat. You 
for all 40 seconds are being used. Um, there's, there's no up tempo. You, you allow the defense to set still when you allow big men of that size on the defense to, to set up and get all their power generated. You're going to have problems. Whereas if you keep them fast paced, they can't, you know, they don't have that burst anymore because they have to be on their toes already. Um, and the defense, you got, you guys got to, guys got to step it up. You can't be on this whole West Coast time when you're playing the Central game. You, you just can't be. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stop it there before it gets a little bit too long. But all in all, you know what? I still stand by what I said last week. This team went fully up and out of sleep. This is a super, this is a Super Bowl caliber team. I'm still gonna say that. Regardless of what people may think of, I'm crazy, I'm crazy, I'm crazy about my Niners. Um, but yeah, if this team, if this team wakes up and this offense shows up and fixes the red zone issues, the offense that we've seen in the last two games steps up and, and fixes those red zone issues, they're scoring 28, 30 a game. And if the defense can just stay up and keep teams below that number, then we win. It's as simple as that. And I still think if all these parts come together, this is still a Super Bowl caliber team on the field that you're seeing, but they need to play together at the same time. But yeah, one and one. Oh well, it's early in the season. We got some more games coming up. Uh, I'm not sure who they play next. Who do they play next? Ah, uh, doesn't really matter. Yes, it does. Oh crap. Uh, <laughs> this is the boring part of the, uh, of the video. I'm sorry, people. I should have had this ahead of time. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Next game against Arizona. It's going to be at Arizona, so it is another away game. Um, this is going to be the game that kind of determines to me whether or not they are going to be good in the NFC West. If they can make that game a game, then we have hope. If not, then it's going to be a long, long season. But yeah, I should have ended this a minute ago. See you guys next time. Hope you enjoy. And uh, go Niners.